Welcome back to Honest News. In this message, we're going to be looking at uh, Paul the Apostle uh, in his relationship with Israel. And uh, we're going to really dive into uh, his emotions, his heart, and what he says concerning Israel. There's a lot of talk today um, from the evangelical crowd um, and from the Zionists about um, Israel and about their position before God. But let's see what Paul the Apostle has to say about this. And let's find out why um, the evangelicals and why the Zionist Jews um, don't want anything to do with the New Testament scripture of the Bible. So let's go ahead and begin. In Romans chapter 9, beginning with verse 1. And this is Paul the Apostle. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises whose our fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God blessed forever amen not as though the word of God hath taken none effect for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Think about what Paul is saying here. He's talking about a remnant. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children of Abraham. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replaitest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, 
Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay and of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. He's speaking of the Gentiles here. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant shall be saved. You think about that, brothers and sisters. Listen to what's being said here. The sand of the sea, though the number of the children of Israel be the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been likened unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followeth after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness? Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Listen to Paul, folks. Listen to his heart. Remember, he's an apostle to the Gentiles. He says his heart's desire and his prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. Are you listening? They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. No wonder they hate the New Testament. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth, not worketh, but believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Remember, you have to believe this in your heart before you confess this with your mouth. Just because you offer God lip service and confess something, folks, if you don't believe it in your heart, 
Confession's not going to do you any good. It's got to be in the heart. It's got to be from the heart. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Not with the lips, folks. Not with confession. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. It's got to start in the heart. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile or the Greek. Boy, no wonder they hate the New Testament. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom, in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How does faith come? Just by reading your Bible? No, it's got to be revealed to you. These two words here, Hearing in the original Greek is logos and rhema. There's two different Greek words used. The first hearing is logos. The second hearing is rhema, the revealed word of God, brothers and sisters. Do you see the difference? It's not enough to just read your Bible. You must receive a revelation of the scripture. The Lord must make that scripture come alive to you. You understand? through the power of the Holy Spirit. And what happens is, when that word is quickened, when that word of God is revealed and becomes rhema, that's what produces faith in your heart. And then you make confession unto salvation. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went out into the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. Listen. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is, is bold, very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Just like they are today. They haven't changed. They're still in this condition. The Lord's still stretching forth his hands to a disobedient and gainsaying people. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Ezraelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Listen to Paul, folks. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wot ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel? Against Israel. Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone and they seek my life. Talking about Israel here, folks. But what saith the answer of God unto Elijah? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men whom have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Hallelujah. Even so then at this present time, also there's a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. 
Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded? According as it is written, God hath given to them the spirit of slumber, speaking of Israel, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak unto you Gentiles. Who is Paul speaking to? The Gentiles. Insomuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, speaking of the Israelites, speaking of the Jews, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in? Well, because of unbelief. Are you getting this, brothers and sisters? Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell. Severity, but toward thee, goodness. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? Severity towards Israel, but toward thee, goodness. What's the condition? If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted in contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And I believe we're approaching that where the fullness of the Gentiles will come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Sion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. I'm not, folks, I'm not making this up. Paul the apostle is saying the Jews, Israel, they are enemies 
As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as you, ye in times past, have not believed God. Remember, there was a time when you didn't believe God, folks. Yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy, through your mercy, oh, praise the Lord. Paul is saying to the Gentiles, through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. Hallelujah. Through our mercy, they shall obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth and the riches both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. We just read three chapters of the most wonderful scriptures that explain God's heart and Paul the Apostle's heart towards the Gentile, or towards the Jews, towards Israel. And this is why the Jews today, this is why Israel today will not read the New Testament. This is why they reject the New Testament. And it's not because altogether they reject it. It's because Satan has cast it in their minds to reject it. It's because the devil, the God of this world, has blinded their minds. Now, brothers and sisters, if you ever have the opportunity to witness to a Jew or to a, gen or to a, a, a seed of Israel, these are the verses you want to share. These are the chapters you want to share with them. If they hear, they hear. If they forbear, they forbear. But these are the scriptures. The, these are the chapters, the golden chapters, I believe, that you should share with Israel, with the Jews. Hallelujah. It is so plain. When you read those th three chapters, it is so plain when Paul says, so deep from his emotions in his heart, he says, I wish, he says, I could be accursed from Christ that my own flesh might be saved. Hallelujah. God called Paul to be an apostle to the Gentile people. Amen? Look at the struggle that Paul the apostle was dealing with. He was called to the Gentiles, but his heart was to reach his own people. Can you see how Paul the Apostle was in a great strait? Can you see how hard it was for Paul reaching out to Gentiles and his own people were not receiving the gospel? Folks, can you see the anguish of Paul the Apostle's heart? Here's these Gentiles that are receiving the gospel but his own people wouldn't receive it. Paul was dealing with the same thing that Jesus came to his own and his own received him not. And to this day, to this day, they will not accept Jesus. To this day, they will not accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. But as we just read, not all Israel is of Israel. There is a remnant in Israel, brothers and sisters. There is a remnant in Israel that will call upon the name of the Lord, and they're going to be saved. And as far as God's concerned, 
That's all of Israel. That's what he means when he says all of Israel shall be saved. He's not talking about those that are not going to accept him. He's not talking about those that rebel and will not accept him. He's talking about those in Israel that will repent, that will call upon the name of the Lord when the Lord reveals himself to them. I, I just, it's so plain, folks. I just believe it's so plain. And I think the reason why God's people are susceptible to be deceived by the evangelicals and the Catholic Church and the Zionists concerning Israel is because they don't read their Bibles. It is so plainly written. A child could understand it. A child could read this and understand it. But God's people turn away from the truth. They turn their ears away from the truth and they give themselves over to fables and they're looking for teachers with itching ears to tickle their ears. Brothers and sisters, we've got to turn back to the Bible. We got to turn back to the scripture and read the Bible. Just read it. Amen. And ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to us. Let's get back to the Bible. Let's get back to the scripture. After all, this is how faith cometh. Amen. By the revealed scripture. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God bless you.